Chapter 14, Cap'n Joe and Cap'n Bill. The rooms Zog had given his prisoners were as handsome as all other parts of this strange enchanted castle. Gold was used plentifully in the decorations and in the rose chamber occupied by the mermaids and trot, golden roses formed a border around the entire room. The sea maidens had evidently been expected for the magician had provided couches for them to recline upon similar to the ones used in the mermaid palaces. The frames were of mother of pearl and the cushions of soft white sponges. In the room were toilet tables, mirrors, ornaments, and many articles used by earth people, which they afterward learned had been plundered by Zog from sunken ships and brought to his castle by his allies, the sea devils. While the mermaids were examining and admiring their room, Tap and Bill went to the peony room to see what it was like and found his quarters very cozy and interesting. There were pictures on the walls, portraits of grave-looking porpoises, bashful seals, and smug and smiling walruses. Some of the wall panners were formed in mirrors and reflected clearly the interior of the room. Around the ceiling was a frieze of imitation peonies and silver, and the furniture was peony-shaped, the broad leaves being bent to form seats and couches. Beside a pretty dressing table hung a bell cord with a tassel at the end. Captain Bill didn't know it was a bell cord, so he pulled it to see what would happen and was puzzled to find that nothing seemed to happen at all, the bell being too far away for him to hear it. Then he began looking at the treasures contained in this royal apartment and was much pleased with the golden statue of a mermaid that resembled Princess Clea in feature. A silver flower vase upon a stand contained a bouquet of gorgeous peonies. As natural as life, said Cap'n Bill, although he saw plainly that they must be made of metal. Trot came in just then to see how her dear friend was located. She entered from the doorway that connected the two rooms and said, Isn't it pretty, Cap'n? And who'd ever think that awful creature Zog owned such a splendid castle and kept his prisoners in such lovely rooms? I once heard tell, said the sailor, of a farm people that sacrificed human beings to please their pagan gods, and before they killed them outright, they stuffed the victims full of good things to eat and dressed them in pretty clothes and treated them like princes. That's why I don't take much comfort in our fine surroundings, Trot. This Zog is a pagan, if ever there was one, and he don't mean us any good. You may depend on it. No, replied Trot soberly. I'm sure he doesn't expect us to be happy here but I'm going to fool him and have just as good a time as I can. As she spoke, they both turned around, an easy thing to do with a single flap of their flexible tails, and Captain Bill uttered a cry of surprise. Just across the room stood a perfect duplicate of himself. The round head with its bald top and scraggly whiskers, the sailor cap and shirt, the wide pantaloons, even the wooden legs, each and every one were exact copies of those owned by Captain Bill. Even the expression in the light blue eyes was the same, and it is no wonder the old sailor stared at his double in amazement. But the next minute he laughed and said, Why, Trot, it's me reflected in a mirror, but at first I thought it was someone else. Trot was staring too. Look, Captain, she whispered, look at the wooden leg. Well, it's my wooden leg, ain't it? He inquired. If it is, it can't be a reflection in a mirror, she argued, for you haven't got a wooden leg. You've got a fish's tail. The old sailor was startled by this truth, and he gave a great flop with his tail that upset his balance and made him keel a somersault in the water before he got right side up again. Then he found the other sailormen laughing at him and was horrified to find the reflection advancing toward them by stumping the long on its wooden leg. Keep away. Get out of there. No, Captain Bill, you're a ghost. The ghost of me that once was, and I can't bear the sight of you. Get out. Did you ring just to tell me to get out? Asked the other in a mild voice. I, I didn't ring, declared Cap'n Bill. You did. You pulled that bell cord, said the one-legged. Oh, did pulling that thing ring a bell? Inquired the captain, a little ashamed of his ignorance and reassured by hearing the ghost talk. It surely did, was the reply. And Sacco told me to answer your bell and look after you, so I'm a-looking after you. I wish you wouldn't, protested Cap'n Bill. I've no use for, for ghosts anyhow. The strange sailor began to chuckle at hearing this. 
and his chuckle was just like Captain Bill's chuckle, so full of merry humor that it usually made everyone laugh with him. Who are you? asked Trot, who was very curious and much surprised. Um, Captain Joe was the reply. Captain Joe Weedles, formerly of the Brig Glansom, and now a slave of Zog at the bottom of the sea. Joe we Weedles? gasped Captain Bill amazed. Joe Weedles of the Gladsom? Why, dash my eyes, mate, you must be my brother. Are you Bill Weedles? asked the other. And then he added, but no, you can't be. Bill wasn't no merman. He were a human critter like myself. That's what I am, said Captain Bill hastily. I'm a human critter too. I've just borrowed this fish towel to swim in this while while I'm visiting the mermaids. Well, well, said Captain Joe in astonishment. Who would have thought it? And who'd ever have thought I'd find my long lost brother in Zog's enchanted castle, full fifty fathoms deep down in the wet, wet water? Why, as for that, replied Captain Bill, it's you as is the long lost brother, not me. You and your ship disappeared many a year ago and it ain't never been heard of since. While as for me, I'm living on Earth yet. You don't look it to all appearances, remarked Captain Joe in a reflective tone of voice. But I'll agree, it's many years since I saw the top of the water, and I'm not expecting to ever tramp on dry land again. Are you dead or drowned or what? asked Captain Bill. Neither one nor the other was the answer. But Zog gave me gills so I could live in the water like fishes do, and if I got on land, I couldn't breathe air anymore and a fish out of water can. So I guess as long as I live, I'll have to stay down here. Do you like it? asked Trot. Oh, I don't object much, said Captain Joe. There ain't much excitement here, for we don't catch a flock of mermaids every day, but the work is easy and the rations fair. I might have been worse off, you know, for when my brig was wrecked, I'd have gone to Davy Jones's locker if Zog hadn't happened to find me and made me a fish. You don't look as much like a fish as Captain Bill does, observed Trot. Perhaps not, said Captain Joe, but I noticed Bill ain't got any gills and breeds like you and the mermaids do. When he gets back to land, he'll have his two legs again and can live in comfort, breathe in air. I won't have two legs, asserted Captain Bill, for when I'm on earth, I'm fitted with one little leg, just the same as you are, Joe. Oh, I hadn't heard of that, Bill, but I'm not surprised, replied Brother Joe. Many a sailor gets to wear a wooden leg in time. Mine's hickory. So is mine, said Captain Bill with an air of pride. I'm glad I've run across you, Joe, for I often wonder what had become of you. Seems too bad, though, to have you spend all your life underwater. What's the odds? asked Captain Joe. I never could keep away from the water since I was a boy, and there's more dangers to be met floating on it than there is soaking in it. And another, one another thing pleased me when I think on it. I'm parted from my wife, a mighty good woman with a tongue like a two-edged sword, and my poor widder will get the insurance money and live happily. As for me, Bill... I'm a good deal happier than I was when she kept scolding me from morning to night every minute I was home. Is Zog a kind master? asked Trot. I can't say he's kind, replied Captain Joe, for he is as near a devil as any living critter can be. He grumbles and growls in his soft voice all day and hates himself and everybody else. But I don't see much of him. There's so many of us slaves here that Zog don't pay much attention to us and... We have a pretty good time when the old magician is shut up in his den, as he mostly is. Could you help us escape? asked the child. Why, I don't know how, admitted Captain Joe. There's magic all around us, and we slaves are never allowed to leave this great cave. I'll do what I can, of course, but Sacco is the boy to help you if anyone can. That little chap knows a heap, I can tell you. So now, nothing more is wanted. I must get back to work. What work do you do? Captain Bill asked. I sew buttons on Zog's clothes. Every time he gets mad, he busts his buttons off, and I have to sew them back on again. As he's mad most of the time, it keeps me busy. I'll see you again, won't I, Joe? Asked said Captain Bill. No reason why you shouldn't, if you manage to keep alive, said Captain Joe. But you mustn't forget, Bill, that Zog has his grip on you, and I've never known anything to escape him yet. Saying this, the old sailor began to stump toward the door, but tripped his foot against his wooden leg and gave a swift dive forward. He would have fallen flat had he not grabbed the drapery at the doorway and saved himself by holding fast to it with both hands. 
Even then, he rolled and twisted so awkwardly before he could get up that his legs, that Trot had to laugh outright at his antics. This hickory leg, said Captain Joe, is so blamed light that it always wants to float. Aga Gru, the gold worker, has promised me a gold leg that will stay down, but he never has time to make it. You're mighty lucky, Bill, to have a mermaid's tail instead of legs. I guess I am, Joe, replied Bill, for in such a wet country, the fishes have it the best of it. But I ain't sure if I'd like this sort of thing always. Think of the money you'd make in a sideshow, said Captain Joe with his funny chuckling laugh. Then he pounded his wooden leg against the hard floor and managed to hobble from the room without more accidents. When he had gone, Trot said, Aren't you glad to find your brother again, Captain Bill? Why, so-so, replied the sailor. I don't know much about Joe, seeing as we haven't met before for many a long year, and all I remember about our boyhood days is that we fit and pulled hair most of the time. But what worries me most is Joe's looking so much like myself, wooden leg and all. Don't you think it's rather cheeky and unbrotherly, Trot? Perhaps he can't help it, suggested the child, and anyhow... He'll never be able to live on land again. No, said Cap'n Bill with a sigh. Joe's a fish now, and so he ain't likely to be took for me by any of our friends on the earth.